Hey folks, welcome back. I'm David. We're here in my shop where I build E War guitars. And this is going to be episode number five of how to build an electric guitar tutorial. Um, and in this video, we're going to wrap up our templates and we're going to do something pretty interesting this time. We're going to use a laser, a relatively inexpensive laser I bought at one of the big box hardware stores here locally. And we're going to use it to align our neck uh, template into our uh, neck pocket template, the body template right here. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I've done it several times now and it works out really well. And I think you just might dig it. And if you do dig it, how about you give me a like and subscribe. Anyway, let's go ahead and get rolling with this video. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the neck pocket so we can fit this neck template into the body template right here. Um, and to do that, we're going to use a laser and some blocks MDF and a router and that type of stuff. But something I wanted to touch on real quick and I want to show you what I did. You see these two green pieces of tape here. I hope they're both in the camera. Um, I want to reestablish my center line now that this thing is cut out. Okay, we had our center line on the drawing, but if you remember, we used uh, that was a piece of paper and we glued it to the top of piece of this piece of MDF. And I just want to redo my center lines because I'm not totally sure that that center line was still centered on this piece of wood right here. Since we're going by the wood, I'm going to reestablish center lines. I hope that makes sense. Uh, anyway. Um, I'm doing that too because it is absolutely critical that this center line of this neck lines up with the center line of the body, along with the pickups, the bridge, and all that other stuff. If not, you're not going to have a very good guitar. It's got to be absolutely centered as perfectly as you could possibly do it. So I'm going to pull the camera in closer. I'm going to show you I've got these two green pieces of tape on here and I've reestablished my centers. And I'm going to show you real quick how I did that before we move on and start laying this out and marking out the body and uh, getting ready to cut that template. Anyway, let me pull you in closer and we'll get on that right now. Okay, so what I've done here is I've taken some of my green tape, all right, and I laid it on here. This top edge of this piece of green tape is lined up exactly on the face of the nut, all right? And I stuck it down there real nice and I took my, uh, my little X-Acto knife and trimmed it off perfectly with the edges of the MDF template. Okay, and I did the same thing. This one is down here at the 12th fret. Did the same thing here, stuck it on there, uh, trimmed it off really nice. I want to see really crisp, clean edges on both sides at the 12th fret and at the nut. Okay, um, I didn't necessarily have to pick those two spots, but those are two critical spots. They're layouts I had on the neck blank anyhow, so I used them. Anyway, so then what I did, now this is a uh, center finding ruler. As you can see, it starts here at zero in the middle, and it goes off in 30 seconds of an inch in both directions. So I come over here. And I laid this out just where a little bit of that, uh, just where a little bit of the green tape is showing above, okay? And I put my center right there and I center it back and forth until I could see I have exactly 27 30 seconds on this side of the uh, neck and I have exactly 27 30 seconds on that side of the neck. Now, a scalpel or a X Acto knife like this is the most accurate way to mark something. So that's what I mark it with first. I came down here and I got right on my zero and I put a little cut in the tape right here, right exactly on the zero. Okay. Then I came back, I've got this uh, mechanical pencil. I came back and I drew it in so I could see it. So that pencil is now going to fall right in the line of that, uh, that knife mark. All right. And then I did the same thing down here. Okay. At the 12th fret, just kept it just shy, just to leave enough of that green tape sticking out. Okay, and I move this to where it's just past an inch on each side. Okay, it's just just barely past an inch on each side. Same thing. I came down here and marked with my scalpel. Okay, like so. Once I had my mark established, I drew that. Now, I want to show you something. This side here, you can see it landed right on my original center line. But this one here... Can you see I'm off, I'm closer to the base side by maybe, I don't know, not much, maybe a 64th of an inch, okay? It's not much, but like I said, I wanted to reestablish this center line, and these two marks are perfectly centered with the actual MDF template I have. 
64th of an inch may not sound like much in the 12 frets I've got there, but you extend a 64th of an inch difference going all the way from the nut all the way down to the bridge, then that's going to add up. It's going to be a much greater difference than that. So um, that's why you have to stop at this point. Heck, you, you go all the way through making the templates. You're constantly rechecking yourself because once these templates are made, I want to be confident that I could reuse them over and over and over again to make this guitar many times. So anyway, it's worth a little extra effort to, to go back and recheck yourself now and make sure when you're done, you've got a good set of templates you can keep using. Okay, uh, I want to show you this little laser I'm using right here. Um, it's this guy right here. It's a Bosch uh, Professional GLL 2-45 laser. It's a little laser we use in construction. It'll shoot a line uh, both uh, vertically and horizontally. Uh, that's what I'm going to use. It's not a terribly expensive tool. Um, but anyway, I just kind of wanted to show you, and I got it clamped into my, uh, my guitar vise right here on the end of my bench. So this is how I do that. So, okay, I hope you can see that. Let me check and see. Yeah, it looks like you can see it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this body on here. See, I've got my center line drawn on the body, okay? And that is accurate. I've also drawn my pickups into here, too, off of the other template. Okay, so I'm going to first get that body line. I'm going to grab a clamp. And I'm going to stick the clamp up under here. Get this guy clamped. It's one of those really handy parts of a Rubo uh, split top workbench. You can clamp stuff like this right down to the center of your thing. Okay, so I'm running beautifully right down the center. Oop. Let me just adjust it just a little. Okay, that is good. I'm centered right on that laser line right there. Okay, now I'm going to lay my neck up here. And I cut my neck into where it's just about a sixteenth of an inch shy of the pickup hole. So, um, Anyway, I'm going to slip a little piece of MDF onto this side to hold my guy up here. Okay, so now I've got the end where I want it to be. Now I have to line up my two little cut marks I did right there and right there. Okay, so now my two marks at the 12th and the nut are exactly on that, and I know I'm already on the body, so I'm going to go ahead and take my pencil now and draw this on. I'm going to look one more time. Right exactly there and exactly there, okay? And I'm a 16th inch short of my pickup route. which is just where I want to be. Okay, now I've got that marked, all right? And I think I may even go ahead and run a couple of screws in this just to hold it down, because we're about to be pushing some MDF uh, boards up against this to form our, our router template for the pocket. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and run a couple screws in this while it's lined up to make sure nothing moves. Actually, I got a better idea. I think I could probably get a clamp on that thing. That'll pretty much stay out of the way. Let me see if I could drop this guy in there. And yeah, it looks like I probably can. Okay. I'm on my mark right there. Mark right there and I'm on the body. That looks good. Now everything's clamped really nicely in place and I can go ahead and get my MDF blocks and shove them up against here and get ready to form our pocket. Okay, so I've still got my laser line on here and uh, I've got three blocks now and I've checked and I've actually ran these through a joiner. These are going to be the blocks I'm going to uh, screw down to my template and it's going to form the pocket I'm going to route. So. I've got these two guys going here, and this guy here is going to go up on the bottom. 
gonna push it in tight everything's clamped down so I shouldn't move but I'm gonna keep that laser on it just in case okay so those look good I'm gonna go ahead and drill a couple holes in this thing So as you can see, I'm pre-drilling my holes. I have a countersink bit that I set for the exact depth of the screws. Uh, and I drill through both pieces too, because I promise you, if you don't countersink these holes, you don't pre-drill them, those little boards I'm screwing on there are gonna shift. And you want them things to be as absolutely tight to that uh, neck blank as you could, or neck uh, template as you can possibly get. So here I'm just going through the normal process. I'm drilling out all the uh, excess waste getting rid of the bulk of the material in there and then I'll take it over to my router and I'll use a half inch uh, top bearing um, flush trim bit pattern bit to uh, cut out the rest and that half inch bit that's the radius I have on the end of the neck template so that'll allow it to fit in there really well of course I take several passes do a little bit of a little depth at a time it works out good all right so let's get these uh template blocks off of there and see how we did. So that looks good. You can still see about half my pencil mark on there. I've got about a sixteenth shy of the, uh, the pickup route hole. So that looks good. And the neck should fit since it fit in the template. Let's see how we do here. Nice. Nice clean fit. Let's uh, check our straightness here. Let's get it through my two lines. Looks good. I'm pleased with that. It looks really good. Um, now just one little side note now, I like my necks to fit in the bodies really, really super tight and this is like a right on fit. So what I'm going to do, when I actually go to route the neck using this template, I'm going to put probably two layers of tape on the outside of this which will increase the size of this a little bit, which will make the neck itself a tad bigger and then when I go to fit it into the actual body, the neck, I'll be able to sand these edges down a little bit right where it fits so I could custom fit it really snugly. That's a good fit there, um, but it's better to start big with the actual neck itself. But the templates look good. I think they turned out nice. Okay, we've got one more template to make, and it's going to be we're going to cut the control cavity, both the inner portion of the hole and as well as the cover hole into this template here. And just in case you're wondering why we don't just go ahead and cut it in the neck pocket template, because we seem to have plenty of room down here to do that. The reason is, remember I said this uh, neck is on a three degree angle. So we're going to have to take, this is a, a, a neck template uh, for another guitar, very similar uh, to that, but a different one. And it's going to wind up, I'm going to wind up cutting these boards are tapered at a three degree angle that are going to apply to the back of that, which is going to hold the template up at a three degree angle on top of the guitar uh, body. So when I route this pocket here, it's going to route my, my neck pocket at a three degree angle. And as you can see, it's in the way of using this for a uh, control cavity. So um, anyway, that's why I'm going to do that on a separate one. And we're not going to cut the, the we're not going to cut in those tapered pieces onto this template until I have the body made. And I'm going to actually bevel off part of the top of the body at three degrees. So I'm going to apply those strips, those three degree angle strips, onto the back of this once the body is tapered uh, up in the neck area uh, so I can fit those pieces properly. But for now, this is a done template. It's a nice uh, neck pocket template. And we're going to go ahead and take this guy and we're going to do this. We're going to do our control cavity into this guy right here. Anyway, so let's uh, move over there and get rolling with that right now. So what I'm doing is, that's an inch and a quarter uh, Forstner bit, and I'm drilling out the four, uh, four points, basically the corners of this, uh, this control cavity. And it's basically a parallelogram. Uh, this is gonna be a, uh, it's gonna have four controls in there. It's got two volumes and two tones. 
Now I, I cut in with my bandsaw to get into it, but now I'll take a piece of veneer later and I'll glue it back in that little space that the bandsaw blade went through to lock it back together so there's never any movement. Now I'm just going to straighten it up and you can see it's a little funny shape, but that's leaving little ledges around the edge to uh, have plenty of room to put the screws in. So now I'm just making the uh, control cavity cover. And also still have to make one more template, which is going to be for the recess for the control cavity cover. But we'll save that for another time. Another great tool right there, that little uh, rigid belt sander. That's an awesome tool for guitar building. It really is. So is that spindle sander I got, that grizzly spindle sander. That's a great one too. All right, we got the templates done. Next week, we're going to get into uh, cutting up our body wood and getting that glued up and getting it ready to go. We'll be building guitar before you know it. Anyway, I appreciate you all for watching. I hope you all got a little something out of this. And I hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.